Hi, this is Mike Elliott and you're watching a CEO Live Executive Interview. In this episode, we'll be talking to Mr. Neil Voloshin. He's the CFO of Cavitation Technologies, a developer of processing technologies for use in edible oil refining, renewable fuel production, and more. Cavitation Technologies is a publicly traded company listed on the OTCQB under ticker symbol CVAT. Good morning, Neil. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Mike. Thank you for having me. To start off, could you give us a little background on Cavitation Technologies, how the company got started, and how long it's been in business? Certainly. Uh, the company was started in 2008. Um, primarily, the company's focus was on renewable fuels, uh, ethanol, uh, biofuels, and the likes. And as we all well know, what, about 2009, the entire industry kind of you know, went down in terms of uh, business development and the likes for various reasons. You know, there were some economic changes that had happened in the United States. Um, and uh, our company had to refocus a bit, uh, start uh, tackling other applications uh, or processes, uh, primarily all, all related to uh, large industrial capacities of liquid processing, but um, we clearly had uh, refocused uh, away from uh, production of ethanol and biofuels. Since that time, uh, the company has been in operations for about five years. Uh, we've developed a number of uh, applications. Uh, some of them uh, today are commercial uh, applications. Some are still in development stage. For the first four years, the company was more like a R and D uh, research and development shop. And for the past year, the company started to recognize uh, revenue and started selling uh, units or systems uh, on commercial scale worldwide. Next, tell us about your technology. How is it developed, and what does it provide? Our technology, as a matter of fact, I want to show something to you. Uh, this was what our reactors look like. I mean, this is the reactor that can process 20 gallons per minute. Uh, this is one of our smaller reactors. It weighs about 10 pounds, uh, all built out of titanium. Um, our systems and reactors can process anywhere from 10 gallons a minute to uh, approximately 200 gallons a minute. So we're highly scalable, uh, small, uh, we, we reduce very small space, so either our technology could be implemented today through the existing uh, process, which would be retrofit, or a brand new plan. Um, implementation usually takes, um, you know, probably a day. So in terms of a shutdown for an operator, it's a relatively small period of time. So what our technology does, and what what do we do? Um, it, like I have shown to you, this is a solid state reactors. Uh, inside the reactors, there are no moving parts, just various configurations. And uh, the uh, fluids enter through the reactors usually anywhere from 300 to 1200 psi. Um, so it's under relatively high pressure. And the we can process uh, pretty much any fluid. And today, uh, we've developed technology that can uh, we work with vegetable oils and fats. Uh, renewable fuels, uh, algae processing, alcohol, and, and, and enhancement, uh, petroleum upgrades, uh, frack waters or uh, produced waters. Uh, so we are not uh, just a one uh, application company, but uh, again, our technology could be implemented to very large global industries worldwide. Uh, what's also important to understand that we uh, develop our reactors are all made in the United States, and this is what we call it, uh, you know, the solid part of, of, of our systems. Also, what we do, we patent uh, or file for patents on the applications of our reactors. So there are really uh, two uh, segments of our business, again, manufacturing of the systems and also applications that we're going to, uh, you know, apply our, our systems and technologies. And, and what are the biggest potential applications for this technology, and, and which, which markets are you pursuing first? Uh, several years ago, we've developed, uh, you know, our reactors so were, the, were implemented uh, in, in the implementation of vegetable oils and fats. Uh, we're talking about soy, uh, palm, uh, sunflower, and the likes. Very large industry. Agribusiness sounds a bit boring, but, uh, you know, very, very large industry. And... Um, uh, this was our initial commercial application to, uh, to our systems. In the past, well, we spent approximately $14 million on the research and development. So uh, we spent quite a bit of money in R&D developing these reactors and systems and also applications uh, as well. 
So initially, like I have mentioned to you, the commercial application of our technology came in in the textual oil industry, where uh, today uh, there are a number of plants worldwide that uh, have installations of our systems and reactors. And um, additionally, uh, today on a commercial scale, we're starting to work um, uh, with frack waters or produced waters. Uh, the systems are being built today. Uh, we're going to have uh, test trials of our systems in the next you know, 60 days. And we believe this is another uh, large commercial application for our technology as well. Uh, several other applications, like I said, we've done quite a bit of research and development, but we're still looking for strategic partners to implement and de develop the technology further. And next, uh, I'd like to discuss your growth strategy. Uh, in a recent press release, you mentioned one of your strategic partners, Desmond Balestra, had entered into a sales agreement with a soybean oil refinery in South Korea. How do these strategic partners fit into your overall growth strategy, and how many licensees like this one do you currently have or plan to have? Uh, Desmond Ballester for us was an, an extremely important strategic partner. Uh, Desmond Ballester, one of the largest uh, companies in the world that built uh, vegetable oil and fats processing plants. Uh, I believe Desmond built over 7,000 plants worldwide. So there is not, they have 42 regional offices worldwide. So kind of to simplify it, what we do, this metal blaster knows how to build cars, for example, right? We know how to build the engine. So in order for our technologies to be implemented, we need to have somebody who really understands the entire spectrum of the industry. And this is what our this metal blaster does. Not only as far as their engineering ability and understanding of the industry, what they do, additionally, because of their large presence uh, worldwide through their sales offices, it clearly uh, allows us to have our technology implemented very rapidly worldwide. Uh, clearly eliminates a lot of cost uh, for a small company in terms of again, sales, servicing, and, and the likes. And this was our um, initial uh, large strategic partner that uh, took on our technology. Since our technology is disruptive technology, uh, something that has that the vegetable oil industry has not experienced in the last 50 or 60 years, according to this Matt Balestra. Again, it requires somebody who is really has somebody that know how, somebody who has this, this enormous reputation to implement technology to, to, to the large industry because uh, for a small company like us, it would be very, very difficult to, to do. Now, today we've sold uh, systems in uh, South and Central America, in the United States. Um, we have trial systems today in the United Kingdom and uh, uh, Italy. Uh, we have uh, first sales in Southeast Asia, which is India and South Korea. Again, it's all, of course, through you know, sales through just just Balestra. We simply provide, again, our technology. They do all implementation, engineering, and installation and service. Um, additionally, like I said, today we're working on track quarters. On track quarters, we also have identified through several strategic partners, and this is who we're working with. Um, Another very important strategic partner for our company was a company called, uh, or a company called GEA Westphalia in Germany. Uh, Westphalia is one of the largest companies in the world. It builds uh, various uh, pieces of equipment for uh, liquid processing. Um, this is another partner partnership that is really extremely important to us to develop future applications, again, including frack waters in the petroleum enhancement and the dairy uh, processing, processing of uh, juices. Um, and this uh, partnership has been, a, we were starting to evolve this uh, partnership into a more of a commercial partnership uh, starting in September of 2013. So this was also a very, very important strategic partner for us where we have signed licensing agreement about a year ago. And uh, as, as of today, we're starting to um, develop you know, that relationship more into, the, into commercial applications. Several other companies, large companies, uh, let's I say some s and 100 companies uh, currently who are working with us. Uh, these relationships are still in some infancy and we're still working with those companies to develop them further and create licensing agreements as well. And the strategy of the company, of course, to develop technologies, and build systems, but implement those systems and technologies through strategic partners because it would be, it would be much faster, more rapid accept, uh, acceptance of, by the industries and implementation. And, and aside from strategic partners, uh, what other, if any, commercialization strategies are you using to build market share? Primarily, our focus is truly, you know, to build it through through strategic partnerships. Uh, like, like I mentioned to you, uh, we're a small company, and the failure, at least from our perspective, uh, for small companies is 
you develop certain application that is very unique, very innovative in trying to absorb the world on your own. It's very, very difficult uh, by creating partnerships with very large strategic partners that implementation process becomes considerably faster and um, considerably more efficient. Um, in the past, uh, like any small company, we've tried to do certain things on our own. Um, you know, it was very, very slow, very slow implementation, and we clearly understand that. If we know how to build the heart to, to, to a process, that's all we're going to stick to, knowing how to build that hard and important, hard and important component to something. However, let somebody else go ahead, come in, and, and uh, you know, do implementation for us. That makes sense. And Neil, that's all the questions I had for today. Was there uh, any other comments you wanted to add before we close? Um, you know, like I mentioned to you that uh, for the first four years, we were primarily an R&D shop. Uh, this first year, our fiscal 2013, that just ended in, on June 30th. For the first year where the company had a significant uh, recognition of revenue, we believe our growth strategy is uh, right today on the right track. Uh, Challenges like for any small company to stay focused, uh, making sure that uh, our technology is implemented correctly. Uh, but those, like I said, those are the challenges we're, we're, we're you know we're seeing, and uh, conversely, we believe that uh, we're going to be successful in, in implementing our technology in sectors worldwide. Uh, that's all I would say for today. Neil, thanks for taking uh, the time to join us. Thank you very much, Mike, for having me. We've been talking to Mr. Neil Voloshin. He's the CFO of Cavitation Technologies, a developer of processing technologies for use in edible oil refining, renewable fuel production, and more. Cavitation Technologies is a publicly traded company listed on the OTCQB under ticker symbol CVAT, and you can find out more about them by visiting their website at www.cti-nanotech.com. Thank you.